Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and PaintballProps.com. This is project number 11, the read switch for our multi-project electronic learning board. Anyhow, if you've been following along with the tutorials, you've been following along with the project videos, this should actually be very easy and you can actually customize your circuit. The read switch. It is a little tiny uh, component that is encapsulated in glass. This is a normally open read switch, which means that if there's no magnetic field anywhere close to it, the uh, two leads are basically not connected to, it, to one another. But when you bring a magnet close by, it acts to close the switch. Now, it's not meant for high power applications, um, but you can do a lot with it with our electronic learning board. Now, this read switch module comes as a peripheral, meaning you, it comes separate with, from the board, and you use two plugins on each side to plug into the board. So, typically, what, we're, what we would do is we would uh, we could connect ground to one side and use the other side to connect ground to anywhere on our circuit by bringing a magnet close to the read switch. But for our project, what we're going to do is we're going to connect one side to our 5 volt line <coughs> on our main power supply pin block, and we're going to use the other side to control a whole bunch of things. First things first, once we've made this connection on our pin block, and I'll actually be showing this on the board in a minute, we're going to take the other lead and we're going to connect it to our LED pin. Just to show you that when I bring a magnet close to the read switch, power will flow through the read switch through our LED, or through our 390 ohm uh, current limiting resistor to power our LED. So when I bring a magnet close to the read switch, the LED will turn on. And when I bring it away, the LED will turn off. From there, we can do a whole slew of things. If you've been following along, you'll know how you can start customizing your circuits because of what we have got, we've got 11 blocks on the board. So after we're done that, what we're going to do is we're going to connect it to the in pin on our monostable multivibrator. Uh, we can adjust the pulse width from basically very, very short, a couple milliseconds, to uh, 10 seconds or more. We're not going to do that. So what this does is whenever we get a positive 5 volt signal on our in line on our monostable multivibrator, we can tune the output to be have a short pulse width or a long pulse width using our DLY potentiometer, a variable resistor. So basically, in this case, if I have a tune for a high pulse width, I take my magnet, put it close to the read switch, bring it away, and then the output, the DLY output of the 555 monostable multivibrator, will go high, 5 volts, for however long I've tuned it. So I can just do an instant magnet, and then take it away, and I can adjust that pulse width. Now I can use my 74LS93 to use that pulse to toggle the A output, but we're not actually going to do that. After we're done that, we're going to take the DLY output from the 555 timer, and we're going to connect it to our ACT pin. And that's our actuator pin. Our, and we've got a transistor driver here. We can drive a relay, we can drive a buzzer, we can drive a motor. We wouldn't want to use this to drive a speaker, but we can do that on our actuator block. On our actuator block, if you've been following along, you'll know that there is a uh, an actuator pin block that allows you to, to select between the motor, the relay, and the buzzer. And we're going to use the buzzer for this project. It's going to be very simple. Let's spring out the electronics learning board. On the left, I've got my read switch peripheral. On the right, I've got a magnet. If I have enough magnets, you will receive one if you purchase the board for early shipments, but if I run out, you'll have to find your own magnet. Anyhow, so I'm going to take one side of my read switch peripheral and place it on the 5 volt line on the power supply pin block. Power supply pin block on the bottom is labeled common for common ground. Upper left is labeled V plus, the four pins in the upper left. Four pins in the upper right are labeled 5 volts. V plus on the left is for your input voltage, which is 9 volts coming from the power supply, the wall transformer ra rather, and the regulated 5 volts is on the right, labeled 5 volts. So I'm going to plug one into the 5 volt line, the other into our LED pin. And now, I'm going to uh, turn out the light so you can see this. So the read switch detects and pulls the connection together. So 5 volts flowing through the read switch to power the LED through the current limiting resistor. So now, Let's connect that to our monostable multivibrator. To calibrate my 555 timer, I'm going to take uh, uh, 
a wire and connected from a DOI output to the LED pin. Now I'm going to be using the input, the in block or the in pin to activate the 555 timer, but I, for calibration purposes I can actually use the secondary trigger which is the S1 DOI button. So let's uh, press the button, just I want to make sure you can see the LED. So that's how long our delay is right now. If I turn the DLY potentiometer left, it should make that pulse longer. As you can see, so I can actually make it really long if I keep turning the DLY potentiometer left. I'm just going to turn it a couple more times. So when I connect that to the buzzer, every time I put and I connect my read switch to the input port, uh, I will be able to. Uh, activate my buzzer. So just so we're on the same page, this is the actuator pin block. There's uh, two pins on the left, two pins in the middle, two pins on the right. Left left pins are labeled buzz for buzzer, middle pins relay, RRLY, and right pins MTR for motor. So I'm going to take my jumper and connect it to the leftmost pins for buzz. I'm going to take the DLY output labeled DLY from our 555 timer and I'm going to connect it to our ACT pin for our actuator. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my read switch and place it back on the board. One pin to 5 volts, one pin to the in line. And now what I can do is I can turn the light out again. There you go. Very easy to use. Uh, so the read switch is acting to trigger our monostable multivibrator, which we've tuned the output to uh, create a longer pulse width. We're using that pulse width to activate our transistor driver, which which uh, which um, activates our buzzer. So there you have it, a very, very simple circuit. You could use this to toggle a relay. You could do all sorts of stuff. If you watch the videos, you could actually customize the circuit to work however you wanted it to within the limits of the board. But again, there's 11 blocks, so the possibilities are endless. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for project number 12, guys.